Hi, my name is Amit, but I'm known around Vanderbilt for a particular quirk of mine, <coughs> balancing my lunch on my head. Now, this habit may seem bizarre and out of place at a formal talk, especially after Rachel, <clears throat> but it centers around a great passion of mine, an art form I believe is worth sharing, juggling. Now, when I first arrived at Vanderbilt, I was in the position of every other student. I had no idea what I'd be involved in, and I had no idea about the world of juggling. Then one day, I stumbled on the Vanderbilt Juggling and Physical Arts Club. They offered to teach me how to juggle, but I was a bit presumptuous, and I decided to attempt juggling without any technique or instruction. I threw a ball up, and I hit myself in the face. Luckily, my embarrassment and the red mark on my forehead wouldn't let me quit. I became stubborn and entrenched, and eventually, I learned how to juggle. But more remarkable, as my juggling began to advance, I became absorbed into a worldwide community, collectively striving to break the boundaries of what we consider juggling and advance it to a level we've never seen before. Juggling now extends way beyond just merely throwing things, evolving into the art of manipulating and balancing objects in new and exciting ways. And I also discovered in my research that juggling also has a fundamentally unique effect on the human brain. So today, I'm here to give juggling a spotlight as both an artistic subculture and a surprising brain booster. And I hope by the end of today, not to convince you to juggle, but to get you to reevaluate how you use the things around you. Now, juggling is a very young art, and it's only recently, through the miracle we call YouTube, that jugglers have been able to share their work with one another. And it's inspired some incredible talents to showcase unbelievable skills. But as more juggling has become available on the internet, the emphasis has shifted from merely showing skill to showing something unique. Just 10 years ago, the predominant form of juggling showcased centered around technique. And a juggler's reputation grew by the number of objects they could juggle. There were a variety of patterns, but the emphasis was almost always on certain stereotypical or mathematical patterns and advancing them up to higher and higher numbers. For example, this is a pattern called half shower. It's a very simple pattern, and almost every juggler learns it. If this were 10 years ago, I'd spend a lot of my time focusing on getting it up to four balls. But <clears throat> this theme continues uh, for a number of different patterns with balls, rings, and clubs, the three conventional props of juggling. Now, you can already hear in what I'm telling you that there's a lot of convention in juggling. But luckily, as a young and unique art, juggling hasn't become weighed down in those things and has evolved dramatically since then. New jugglers now seek to create entirely new patterns. And circus schools, yes, those do exist, now actually push their students to shift once conventional patterns with new throws or new ideas. For example, this is Mill's Mess. But with a simple thought like, what if I do that behind my back? You can create an entirely new aesthetic. Juggling more and more objects has become less important. And while there's still room for remarkable technique, creating and embracing new ideas has become the drive of the juggling community as a whole. A great example was just last year, when possibly the most famous juggler in the world, Wes Beaton, look him up, decided to feature an entire section of his latest video with taped together props, taping together clubs to clubs or rings to clubs, to create entirely new shapes and manipulations we've never seen before. And that, I think, is the ultimate artistic power of juggling, to change the way we use the objects around us and to change what we think is possible, both physically and creatively. To put it another way, jugglers are no longer asking how many things I can juggle, but finding out there's nothing we can't do with them. Now, something I always get after this long spiel is, that's all well and good, Amith, but 
I'm not coordinated enough to juggle. Well, as you heard, neither was I. And as it turns out, very few people actually are. So how then do you see people juggling upwards of seven objects? Well, some researchers actually sought to test this. Now, to be clear, motor learning is not an uncommon concept in neuroscience. It's normally seen as cha internal functional changes in areas like premotor cortex or cerebellum, which have to do with motor planning and coordination. This is normally called functional plasticity, and it's not all that uncommon in neuroscience. But juggling showed something unique. Researchers, researchers in Germany split participants into two groups. One group would learn how to juggle, the other wouldn't. Now before training, both groups were assessed with MRI, and they found that on average, their brains were fairly standard, about the same. But three months later, they called back in both groups for another round of MRIs, and discovered that the group that had learned how to juggle actually experienced growth in the gray matter of their brains, the area that actually contains the neurons, the actual cells of the brain. Some people hypothesize that these are morphological changes, actual changes in the size of cells, but some people even believe that this might be proliferation, creation of entirely new cells. Simply put, juggling doesn't just change the function of certain parts of your brain, it changes the actual shape. Never before had anything like this been seen in the adult human brain. And more remarkable, the area changed was area HMT, or V5, which has to do with basic visual motion processing. To me, it sounds like the science confirms the art. Juggling actually changes the way we see objects in motion, which is the ultimate goal of any art, in my opinion, to change the way we see the world. So though it may seem impossible to juggle, it turns out we can change to juggle, and juggling can even change us. So the next time you look at the things around you, pens, papers, lunch trays, try to look at them as a juggler would. See all of the most remarkable, most bizarre, the most uncharacteristic ways you can use those things. And who knows? Maybe it'll change you too. Now, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to show you a little bit of what I've learned. 